Hey guys, Stan here from Rocky Creek. Welcome back to the homestead. I know it's been a little while, but we're definitely glad to be back with you. Uh, but anyways, we're preparing now for the holidays. I still got wrestling season going on as well for the team that I coach. So far, the season's going great. We're, uh, we're undefeated right now, which is great. I think we're like 12-0 and 0 or 13-0. and 0. But this group, uh, they're, they're a special talent, but they're also a special kind of uh, uh, have to stay on them type. Uh, I'd say that they're the, the best talented group, but the worst disciplined group I probably ever have had. And I've said this to their face, so it's nothing that they don't hear. So they're needing a lot of extra time to keep them to their potential. So that's taking up a lot of time. But, but what we're going to talk about today and why I'm standing here in this area is that if you've been with us, you know that we processed our meat chickens this year a little earlier than we normally do because we started having some predator attacks occur and they were coming into the electrical premier one fencing that we had which is up here on top as i'm starting to, to break a lot of this stuff down for the year and i don't know what was getting them uh, this area is too far from the house that our wi-fi cameras aren't operational and then you may not know but just above this hill here uh, right there at the tree line if you can see it is that's where our pigs are and you know that we had a bear attack our pigs for the first time killing one of our small piglets. And so this kind of area of our property isn't able to be covered with Wi-Fi cameras, like I said. And I was very, very fortunate that a company reached out to me and wanted to know if they could provide me one of their cameras to try out to see if it would help us. And I let it sit there for a few weeks because I get, I get quite a few emails of such. Uh, but you know, I started thinking about how a camera that doesn't need the Wi-Fi may actually benefit me greatly. And I thought I'd be kind of dumb not to take them up on this opportunity. So after speaking to them further, we gave it a try. I've had it up for about a week and a half now, testing it out to kind of see how it does before I brought you along. And I still got a couple things I need to tweak on it. I kind of just have like a temporary setup as I gave it a test run. But let me show you what it is. Let me show you kind of how it looks like. And then let me show you a couple things we're going to do to kind of tweak it and get it maybe about how we want it as we continue to test it out. So come along and let me show you this uh, pretty cool camera that we got from a company called Reolink. So come on. So here it is, guys. The Keen Ranger PT from Reolink. I like the camouflage look of it. So let's pop this bad boy open. So right here, the top part has some information on how to download the app and some booklets. This will be the wireless antenna to pick up the cell signal. Then of course you have the camera head itself. Here is the power button. Here is where you can plug in the solar panel and then the chrome or gold part next to it is where the antenna will screw on. Here is one of the mounting brackets that you can hook the camera head onto. And there's a release button on the top once you have it on. And a strap for if you want to do a temporary mount versus a permanent mount. A charging cable. There's some various packs of screws within here. And then underneath all this is the solar panel itself. Along with its cord to plug it in which is pretty long. Here's the mounting arm for the solar panel. It's pretty good solid metal, lightweight. And then here's an additional strap as well. And there's some other screws in here. So once again, here's the camera head. And there's a couple things on here. Is here's the micro SD portion. It came with a SD card, but to do wireless, it's got another slot for a nano one. So let's see what size this SD card is that came with it. So it looks like a 32 gigabyte SD card came with it. So we'll pop this back in. So now let's go ahead and put all this stuff together. Let's peel this film off of the camera right here and let's screw this antenna on, which is Pretty straightforward and simple. All 
Oh, no, wrong thing. That goes to the solar panel, so I need the other bracket here. There we go. This makes more sense. So this works out pretty good, just threads on, and then right when it got to the end, you'll hear it click, and that kind of locks it in, I guess, to keep it from being pushed around by wind or anything like that. And this is pretty cool. You're able to actually move this camera via your cell phone once you're hooked up to the wireless network, so you don't have to constantly go out there and manually adjust it. So now let's go ahead and put the correct one on the solar panel so we can get that bracket on installed. It's a little bit harder to thread on than I was expecting. All right, so let's get this threaded on to the solar panel so then it has its bracket arm and then it should be ready to go for installation. Cord gets a little bit in the way so I learned it was better just to spin the actual rod, not the panel. There you go. Camera head, solar mount, and some straps to put it on. That should be all I need. All right, so now that we've talked about the camera, let me give you an idea if you're new with us where we're at. There's our home, which we have cameras on, and then you come down here and then there's this path. Those are our fruit trees over there that are still little babies. But then when you come this way, this leads you to where we ran the meat chickens this year into kind of this field. And over here on this locust tree is where I have put this camera temporarily. And this is where it's been for, like I said, about two weeks. It's been super windy and stormy, so I think that probably blew the antenna down. But so far, this thing's picking up pretty good. And I don't have it solid mounted. I have it temporarily mounted with the strap. And it's been holding up good. We actually had about five days of continuous rain and high winds, and it actually stayed exactly where it's at. But if you notice, I don't have the solar panel on it. So let's talk about that real quick because I want to get the solar panel put on and then I'll also talk to you about the SIM card part of it because that was new to me and it took a little bit of figuring out. So come on. So hopefully you can see this is the solar panel and I don't want to hard mount it right now because I'm not sure where I'm going to permanently put this thing. And so I've been trying to figure out because it didn't have a slot to run a strap, but in the box there was two straps and I thought well maybe it's just a replacement strap in case the one uh, messes up but then I saw this like random bracket piece some kind of a metal bracket of some sort and I started messing with it and I noticed it fits right there and I don't know really what that's for because unless I overlooked it I don't see anything in the instructions but I found some tiny screws within this packet that I believe mounts this here. And so I'm actually kind of wondering if I can't feed, you can see there's a little gap there. I'm gonna try to, to screw this on and feed this strap through here until I know permanently where I may wanna run this thing to where I don't have to unscrew it all the time. So I'm gonna stick these screws in and then we're gonna see if we can't rig it up with this strapping so I can go ahead and have a solar panel charger running to the battery that's already charged as well. All right, so we got that on there. Now let's see, I think this strap will fit through there. It may be a little bit hard. Let's see if we can't fish this thing through there. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably would have been smart to lay the strap here and then put it back down. This is why I need y'all here with me. You can keep me, yeah, that's what I'm gonna need to do. That's not gonna work. Cause it's wanting to go down into the hollow part of the hole. So let's back those out and let's lay it across. So there we go. We got that, I can move it through. So let's see if we can't get this thing mounted up and get it plugged up and try to help out this battery stay charged. So they give me a very, very long amount of cable. So I guess if you need to get it, you know, out into the sunlight um, and then it just plugs in right on the side of the camera, which I'll bring you in closer in a minute, but right here near the antenna is where it plugs in there. So, I'm going to come back here with some clippers and I'm going to clip a bunch of these branches off. But for right now, we're going to get her mounted. The sun rises to my left, so I'm going to try to hook this thing on around here 
on the smaller branch next to it and see how that works out. Now you guys, I self admit, I have not done much with trail cameras. So a lot of this is rather new to me. And doing a SIM card style camera was definitely very new to me. Uh, so if you're new to a lot of this stuff like I am, hopefully my experience will help you um, because I claim to be an amateur. I do not claim to be a professional. There we go. I have to keep sliding that strap because the branch that's going on is relatively small. There we go. All right, turn that, tilt that. And I'm gonna have to undo this cable because I do need a little bit. I don't wanna let it all out actually. I don't think I'm gonna do that. So we're gonna do this. I'm gonna take it back here and then plug it up. All right, so I'm not sure how much you could see that. So here is the solar panel. And I turned it this way because the sun does rise over there and as I was explaining these branches right here I'm gonna trim some of those but really there's no leaves so there should still be a good amount of sunlight come into it so and then we ran that strap which actually worked out pretty well so I don't know if that's what it's for but if you want to be able to run straps that did work out just fine and then I just brought the cord over the top and you can see the access there and then I brought it here where it plugged into here now I had a little hard time plugging it up because it has this rubber housing that I assume is for waterproofing and it's loose. And so I kept thinking I was turning the plug-in, but really I was just turning that rubber outer part. So I had to kind of hold it a little bit weird to get it to plug in there. But now it's in there good and snug and we got the antenna back up. So that's the whole camera setup right there though. And now we got the solar panel to aid and assist it. So now that we've shown you the camera installed and how we've got it running, let's talk about the SIM card setup real quick because that was new to me. So guys, when the Rio Link camera arrived, it has, I think it was a 32 gigabyte data card in it to where you could run it like a traditional game camera where you just kind of set it, forget it, and then come back and review your videos later on. But if you wanted to do a live stream, then you needed to get some kind of a data plan SIM card. And so I did some researching on it because I didn't know anything about that. I'm not technically savvy. And the best that I could find um, from what I was able to look for was a company called EIOT e -I -E Club? E -I, I don't know, EIOT Club. Um, and so I got what they call their triple play data plan. And from what I read when I was trying to figure this part out was that it's gonna tie into a cellular tower and you gotta figure out which provider works best in your area. And so to be on the safe side, this triple play data card covers AT&T, Verizon, and I believe it's T-Mobile. And for us, uh, AT&T and Verizon are very strong carriers, and I figured I'll get all three just to be on the safe side. And when they show up, they show up with the different size cards depending on what you need. And I needed, I believe, what they call the Nano one, so that's been punched out. And it was actually super easy when I looked into it. All I did was on the bottom of the camera, well, first I downloaded the RioLink app, which, which was free, of course. And then I unscrewed the camera from its mounting base. And at the bottom of the camera, there is a um, QR code. Um, I scanned that QR code and I, entered, I stuck the uh, Nano SIM card into the device. And once I put the SIM card into the device, I turned the camera on and a blue light was flashing and after about a minute to two minutes it told me it was connected and all i did from then was uh, that qr code with the website it put it up and it kind of just set itself up no problem it took me through some steps i named it i think i named this one front slash pig area um, and so you could set them up like that and you can do multiple devices uh, but honestly, this was pretty easy. Uh, but there are some cons to this, and I'm gonna talk to you about that here. So what are some of the cons to running this SIM card is number one, it's got a monthly expense to it. Uh, you can pay annually, and there may be some better deals than what I was able to find, but through this company, uh, for right now, I just did a 30 day, 1999, two gigabytes of data, no cell phone plan, it's just strictly a data plan, um, and I paid the 1999. 
Now I can pay each month and keep reloading it, but once that data is used up and the month is done, it, it, it's going to no longer work. And then I just have to go to the to the site and just just re-upload some money into the data card, and it'll re reboot itself or be able to be used again. Or they had an option where I could have paid $159, I think, and it would have covered me for the whole year. In my opinion, the $159 for the whole year is gonna be the way to go if this is the way that I want to do this. Uh, but I wanted to just commit myself to $20 for 30 days just to see how well it operated, how much did I use it, and how much am I gonna need that. Depending on how that plays out, I plan to do one of two options. I may either go ahead and pay the $159 for the whole year and be done with it, or I see myself using this camera primarily needing the live feed during two times. Number one, when we're running our meat chickens for about two months out of the year, or if we have another set of piglets, this camera will become a huge game changer when I wanna monitor the sow as she's about to give birth and or the piglets after they're born. And so I, then I have to weigh, you know, three months in total of maybe usage would only equal 60 bucks. So do I just pay the 60 or do I pay the 159? So I think it's still to be determined, but you know, that's the only con to it is you will have a monthly fee. During the times I'm not doing the fee, then I can't always just do a download of the, of the SD card that's already in it. It's just to see what kind of animal traffic we're getting here whether we're starting to get bears in the area coyotes because while i don't have chickens down here i don't have a great concern we have the electrical line running outside of the pigs now so i don't really have concerns about them getting attacked any longer so i'm really only really really concerned about what is actually happening right now when i have chickens here and when we have baby piglets so you know it's going to be a balanced thing here um, as we proceed but right now functionality it's been very user friendly setting up the sd card much easier than what I had, or SIM card technically, is much easier than what I had anticipated. And installation was pretty good. Um, so overall, I've been very pleased with it. And now, let me show you some of the quality of videos that we've been getting off of it, so you can kind of see that for yourself as well. Now let me show you a little bit about the Reolink app. When you bring it up, it'll initially default to going to a live connection view. Um, and you can do your playback or live. And so now it's gonna bring it up. And I'm gonna start walking to the camera and it's pretty neat how it has different icons to register different things. So when I start to come into the picture, you notice there's an icon in the top right hand corner of a person. If it detects it as an animal, it'll be a paw print. If it doesn't know what it is, it just defaults to some dots. So I kind of like when I'm going to playback, I can have an idea if it's a person or an animal. So this is me just walking around, giving you a little idea of how that triggers that. Now, another thing about this camera is you can change the level of quality. So I'm keeping on the low setting because it takes up a whole lot less data. So guys, this has actually been a really neat experience on something because I'm not very technology savvy, technological savvy. I don't know what you call it. Um, so it's been kind of neat to learn how to operate this camera system. And it's been pretty neat to see what we are indeed having down here when it's nighttime. And so I'm very curious to see how this will progress and we'll see how this month goes. Uh, but so far, I've actually been very pleased with this Reolink camera. Um, I'm not affiliated with them by any means. They just asked if I would try it out and give an honest review for it and to share it with you all um, in exchange for giving me the camera. Now, with that being said, though, there is one more con to the camera, even though I'm very pleased with it, is that it is 
pretty pricey in my opinion. Now, I don't know what all goes into making one of these cameras as compared to another camera. I know the cameras we have in our house weren't exactly cheap either. Um, you know, they were about $180 a camera and require Wi-Fi um, back when I bought them. Now I've had them for several years. And so prices I'm sure have changed over the years. But this camera from when I saw on their website on sale was I think 289 and I've seen them as expensive as 329. But on the actual Rio Link website, I believe they were on sale for 279, 289, something like that. I'll throw a link down below for them and for their Amazon store where they sell it there as well. So you can check pricing for yourself. I'm sure it changes as times, especially as we're around the holidays. So I could see a, a one-time investment on the camera because um, it comes with the SD card. You don't have to have the monthly payments like we do. It could probably pay for itself in the long run if you have a very big need for a good way to keep an eye on your animals or property or anything like that. What are you doing? What are you doing? Oh, this is so cute. Y'all's a cute doggy. He's so cute. Clay, come on. A little chunky butt. You don't got the goose all worked up. What are you mad about? I hear you. It was just a dog. It's okay. So guys, one thing I plan to use this camera for, especially because I don't think we're gonna have no piglets anytime soon, and we're done with meat chickens for the year, but I kind of just want to have it set out there in the front for a little while just to see what kind of predators I may be able to pick up over the next couple weeks. Uh, but then I actually plan to move it, which is why I only want to use straps, is I want to move it over here into the chicken area. And I want to move it over here because if you remember last year, we had our second, our other goose that we had, because we had two, got attacked by something. And then something got my I am Samani hen that had some babies. And I'm thinking that was probably a raccoon because my wife has seen a raccoon in here before. But I think I want to set a camera up in here as well for you know several weeks just to see if I'm getting any kind of activity here within the run. Now the good thing is ever since we put the automatic chicken door in and stuff, we haven't lost any um, chickens to predators. And then ever since the addition of the goose, so far, fingers crossed, we haven't had any aerial predator attacks. So, so we're hoping we can maintain that, but I still wanna see what kind of critters we may or may not be getting in here with our chickens. Uh, so guys, I'm not gonna tell you, you know, to go buy this real link camera or not. Um, I'm just giving you my honest opinion of it. I'm very thankful and blessed that I didn't have to purchase this. And we kind of have had some situations, particularly this year, that a camera that, that can pick up, that doesn't need the Wi-Fi, very much could benefit us. So I'm beyond blessed that they sent this to me. You know, if I had the available cash, I would probably buy this camera. Uh, I do know that, you know, upper $200 range is pretty hard for some people. But in so far with my experience with this camera, I'm very pleased with it. Um, I would recommend it as of this point for right now. Uh, my experience with the SIM card company, because that is not provided to you, um, I'm very pleased with that as well. Um, it was very easy and user friendly. I don't know how easy and user friendly the reload of it's gonna be, but the initial setup, purchasing, getting it, and so on and so forth, that part was um, rather easy. So, you know, overall, my experience has been good with both the camera and the SIM card. I'm not a, uh, the SIM card company didn't reach out to me. I just had to Google those on my own and try to see what I could find. Um, I couldn't find anything in any local stores, so I had to revert to the internet. Um, so guys, I hope this may help you out. I know it's not a lot about homesteading, but that, that camera definitely could be usable on a farm and or a homestead. So go check them out, make an opinion for yourself. I believe some other people have uh, found someone. I looked up some information, uh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Um, he's got a pretty big page. Um, I used to watch a ton of his videos back in the day. Just haven't because of time's sake here lately. But he as well utilized, I believe, an older version of this camera and was pretty pleased with it and did a pretty cool mobile setup that he has for that. So you can go check his channel out if you want some further information on it. But hopefully this helps. Appreciate y'all coming along. If we don't see you before Christmas, we hope everybody has a wonderful and Merry Christmas. But I sure hope to be with you before that. But we'll see how things go in this busy life that we have. But guys, appreciate y'all. Hope everybody's doing well. And we'll see you here very soon on one of our next episodes. Thanks, guys.